how you would do that. Uh, are you a creative person? Ms. Madley, are you a creative person? Yes. Okay. So you, you, I want to see some creativity. You got some great ideas as to how you would like to do that service learning project? You got some great ideas? Yes. Very good. All right. What about you, Mr. Church? Uh, well. Yeah. You you got some ideas as to how you want to do it? What uh, yeah? What did you decide that yours is on again? Uh, you are you which no. respect for self or respect for others? Which one did you do? Respect for self. Okay, you did respect for self. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, when do you think uh, you'll have a draft of that ready for me? Okay, I'll take them by tomorrow. Really? Uh huh. Oh, great job! Great job! Yeah, I got you down. Okay, and uh, Mr. Grice, are you with us? Respect for self. Got you. Yes, sir. You, you. Which one did you decide on? You doing, Mr. Grice? Respect for PSC property. PSC property. And when do you think you'll have that draft ready for me? Friday. Oh, wonderful. You all working ahead of time. Now, how many more days of classes do you have in my particular class? Uh, let me see. Yeah, it should be seven. So we got a week left. You are right. You're right. So next week this time, it's over. Next week this time, right? So how many days is that? Five days. Five days. It's Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday. And then uh, you're going to present on, are you presenting on uh, Tuesday or or Monday? Are you presenting on Tuesday or Monday? Uh, I don't know. I got to check. Okay. You got to check. <laughs> okay. When do you think you would present, Miss Medley? Tuesday or a Monday or Tuesday? I'll do Tuesday. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, Churchwell, did you give me an answer? Tuesday. Okay. I got you down. I got you down. Okay, uh, you're going to do a skit, PowerPoint, or tease us a little bit. Tell us how you're going to do it. What are you going to, you got some great ideas. You're going to do a, a voiceover. You're going to do a, 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 a PowerPoint voiceover. What are you going to do? Creative, be as creative as you would like. You don't have to tell us now. Okay, yes, I got you down very well. Okay, so for today, um, you're transitioning to from uh, the uh, topic of uh, uh, respect for PSC property and leadership you've done, and you're going to look at clubs and organizations today which is in student affairs. Uh, tomorrow you'll start your new topic and that's gonna be on scholarship, one of your seven uh, timeless human values, scholarship. So today is a transition day that you go from I have you down, uh, Ms. Santos. Okay, today is a transition day where you will go from uh, student affairs to academic affairs in all of your uh, planning. And one of the things about your on-course uh, textbook, uh, it makes a great 
a deal that would transition you is talking about your college outcome and the value of you going to college. Um, and um, there is, this is Carl Rogers, who is a great psychologist. Uh, there is evidence that the time for learning various subjects would be cut into half the time allotted if the material were perceived by the learner, that's you, as related to your own purpose. So if you can figure out how you can relate a lot of these things to your own journey in life, you can cut your time in studying your various topics in half. Uh, the value of college outcome, one of the most widely recognized benefits of a college degree is increased earning power. How many of you want to earn uh, money? Raise your hand. You want to earn a nice salary. So um, according to the recent U.S. Uh, Census Bureau data, high school uh, graduates earn an average of $1.2 million during their working lives. So you're going to be a millionaire during your working life. You're going to earn that much money. You got to learn how to save it, how to keep it, how to make certain that you manage your funds, your resources. But you're going to earn over a million dollars in your working lives. However, if you com complete a two-year associate degree, that lifetime goes up to $400,000. If you complete a four-year bachelor's degree, which you're working on, you can add another half a million dollars to your income. That means college graduates earn nearly $1 million more in their lifetime than those who end their former education with a high school de uh, degree. Uh, that's a lot of income. One of the things that they want you to focus on, a college degree confers many benefits. According to the Institution, Institute for Higher Education Policy, and the Carnegie Foundation, college graduates enjoy higher saving levels, improved working conditions, increased personal and professional mobility. You can go from, uh, if you wanted to go to New York, you can go. If you want to go to California with your degree, you can go because you have that increased uh, professional mobility. You can move around. Your health is improved. Your life expectancy is improved. Uh, the quality of life for your children, if you have any children, that's improved. Um, better con uh, consumer decision making, uh, increased personal status in the world, in your community, in your society. You, and you, you, you have more hobbies and leisure activities when you have a, a, a college degree. So this is what the study is telling us hobbies and leisures. That transitions us to your student handbook. And your student handbook, uh, go to your page, um, student handbook chapter seven. Student handbook. Uh, that's the one that I emailed to you. And I email you the clubs and the organizations. How many of you have those clubs and organizations? I need you to identify two. I just sent you that email. And identify two to three your freshman year, two to three of those uh, 26 organizations, your sophomore year, your junior year, and your senior year that you would like more information uh, about. You think that you will uh, be able to get into those organizations or learn more about those organizations. Clubs and organizations. You remember we talked about uh, you got to have a certain GPA. One of those um, how many of you want to be involved in the Student Government Association your freshman year? Oh, 
let me see your hands. You want to be involved in the Student Government Association your freshman year. That's page 31 of your student handbook. And clubs and organizations. There, how many clubs and organizations do you see on that list that I email you? How many clubs and organizations? You see 26, right? Uh, unmute yourselves. Okay, yes, unmute yourselves. How many clubs and organizations do you see on that list? I just emailed you. Miss Santos? Do you see I'm trying to pull up my email right now. If, if my computer is going extremely slow. We just sent you a new computer, did we? <laughs> it's, and it's the same computer. It's going extremely slow. Okay. Is that uh, Lenovo? It, the no Lenovo one. Yes. Uh, it's a one? Oh, okay. All right. Uh, do we need to work on it? All right. Anthony? Jordan? Jordan, are you there? Yes. Okay. Do you see your uh, your clubs and organizations? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, how many do you see? 26. 26. Very well. Now... Uh, I need you to identify just uh, how, what two organizations uh, would you consider your freshman year, learning more about your sophomore year, your junior year, your senior year. You don't have to get in them, but I, I want to expose you to them because um, uh, that's how you build your leadership skills by getting in clubs and organizations. And we have uh, 26 registered students or student organizations. And uh, the, the, they get involved in various uh, activities that will improve their skills. And that's what you want. You want to get in an organization that will allow you to grow and improve your skills. And every one of these uh, activities and experiences that you will have are endorsed by uh, Philander Smith College, promoted by Philander Smith College. And uh, that, that's exactly what you want. Okay, now, uh, let's go down that list and this is the What um, what do you see, Anthony?
There you are. Very nice. Okay, send me some more. Clubs and organizations. Mm -hmm. I like reading. Okay. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, Anybody interested in that uh, criminal justice uh, club? Anybody interested in criminal justice club? I am. Okay. Very good. And uh, that write that. Which year you you have that down for? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Freshman. Very well. Very well. Any other group uh, organization? that you want for your freshman year that you want to explore uh, empowering African American male empowering the African American male uh, is that, I'll, that do that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that one okay and then they, they are alphabetical they go into a dance team that was <laughs> yeah that's a, a dance team anybody interested in dance uh then they have a Greek council, um, forward focus media. They have sororities and fraternities, international student organization, and uh, pre med, pre med society, pre alumni council, platinum by design, and the uh, social work stump model. <laughs> government and resident hall association resident hall association uh are you going to anybody staying on campus who's staying on campus i am oh okay let's take a look at that they want you to go to uh hand your handbook and it's called uh page 95 and it goes to page 114, section seven of your student handbook, residential life. The purpose of this handbook is to provide residential students with a resourceful information tool. The contents provided in this handbook serve to heighten students' awareness of the residential life policies and operational procedures. Uh, it talks about the mission statement and the mission statement of residential life at Philander Smith College is to foster an environment where students are academically empowered, socially responsible, culturally diverse, and change agents for social justice. So you'll be a change agent for social justice. Um, residential life is committed to assisting the institution in the development of tomorrow's leaders and academic scholars. Remember we were talking about student affairs, that's you becoming a leader in your clubs and organizations and then your academic scholar. We'll be talking about academic and going through your student handbook, uh, student catalog tomorrow. We're going through the handbook today and uh, student handbook and then you'll go through your academic catalog tomorrow to learn about your major, how you can focus on your academics with much more responsibility. Uh, so you'll be prepared once you finish with this particular course and with your personal and your social development. Um, there, you have to commit yourselves to ensuring that your facility that you're living in is clean and attractive and comfortable to live in. 
And that means the basic psychological and your safety needs. Don't let anybody come in your resident halls who are not safe. That includes you as the resident and them as the visitors, the guests. And you have to focus on your integrity and responsibility uh, as your guiding principles and the foundation for the services that the residential life provides. Uh, there's a staff that you will be cordial to and meet and greet. And uh, there's a director of housing and residential life. There are coordinators and office managers in there, um, area coordinators uh, in the various living uh, facilities. Um, there are RAs, which would be students such as yourselves, who will, your peers, they are student employees that are carefully selected. I enjoy writing letters personally for them. And I'll write a letter from you uh, if you continue to meet with me and I learn about you, your personality, and so forth. Uh, so I can give a glowing letter of reference for you to be an RA. And you can get benefits from being an RA. You receive special training to assist residents in a variety of ways. You live on the floors with your fellow residents. Uh, you facilitate the floor meetings and you help initiate and organize floor programs for homecoming, welcome back activities and so forth. And you are resourceful for providing campus information about residential life policies. Uh, the most important function is to assist the residential life staff in ensuring that the halls are comfortable and safe living environments conducive to the educational objectives of the college. So you as a residential assistant work on rotating shifts so that at least one of you all is on duty every night of the week. The RA on call schedules, um, their schedules are posted at the information desk and near each RA room door. Residents are encouraged to consult their RAs and to go see RAs on call regarding issues and problems. Your job is to help solve and resolve issues and problems and point out to people who are above you what those issues and problems are. You may even deal with concerns and situations uh, before, uh, if the concern is not addressed, it develops into a, pro uh, a problem. First, it starts out with the situation. Then the situation, you don't resolve it long enough, it goes into a concern. And you don't solve the concern, it goes into a problem. You don't solve the problem, it gets on someone's agenda. And it's ruled on. And that's how, that's how the politi political process works uh, throughout America. And it also works that way on our campus. Okay. You have some residential assistant peer mentors <clears throat> that uh, peer mentors work under your direction uh, of the residential life coordinators. And then you have office assistants, OAs. Uh, residential life operates one information desk in the residential life center. And the desk is staffed by work study students. And office assistants are responsible for answering the phone providing residents and visitors with information, uh, notifying residents when packages arrive, sign visitors in and out of the halls, and various other administrative duties as assigned by the uh, residential life staff. So you all have a lot to do, um, and I understand that we're gonna open back up the halls to um, maybe 250 to 275 students and it will be single room occupancy. Uh, that We just learned that from our Vice President for Academic Affairs meeting a couple of days ago. And there's a security. Uh, when you can't handle things, there's a security. Philander Smith College uh, security personnel monitor, monitors the uh, Residential Life Center daily uh, between midnight and 8 a.m. 
and all day on weekends. So you have access to security uh, on uh, staff in the residence hall. And there are some policies that you have to go by if you're living in our halls. And this is your student handbook. Go back and read uh, chapter 7, uh, section 7 of your student handbook. Bicycles, motorcycles, and uh, those little boards, hoverboards that you ride on. Uh, there are some rules about those. And uh, those boards are strictly prohibited in uh, on the campus and Philander, uh, Philander Smith College and includes residential facilities. And if you uh, remember, your handbook also said that you can uh, work to improve the policies that we have in this book. So if you can show that those boards can be utilized in a certain designated area on a certain designated time, then you can put forth that recommendation. Uh, so everything in our handbook gives students an opportunity to help make changes to the policy so that uh, our campus can be conducive to your staying here. Okay? That, does that sound okay? Does that sound well? Uh, talk to me. Talk to me. Unmute yourselves. I want to know you're still here with me or somebody. All right. The uh, also uh, break periods and cable information on uh, cable television. Your break periods are like uh, uh, when the campus is closed during specific holiday periods and summer breaks. And uh, each student must vote, vacate the residential life center during those periods. And you read that in your on page 89. You also have to uh, focus on uh, cleaning up the uh, uh, his uh, own her own private room and bath area. There are some common areas that you have to be aware of, such as the TV lounge area. When I go over there, I visit that area. The social room. We have a social room. We have a game room, laundry room, snack room, study lounge, and uh, you have to conduct yourself in such a way. No horseplay. Conduct yourself in such a way that you don't have to horseplay. Uh, limited sports, uh, non-sanctioned activities in the uh, common areas. We have a curfew, uh, and uh, you can read that one. And if it's still Sunday through Thursday at 12 a.m., uh, Friday and Saturday at 2 a.m., freshmen who violate the curfew policy will be fined and or sanctioned. So make certain that you read this section so that you will know exactly what's going on. And that they, we do damage um, inspections and reporting of all damages, if you see any, uh, to the residential life staff. They have, uh, we have policy on decorations and furniture must stay inside the rooms and concrete blocks and bricks and, homemade bookshelves and lofts are not permitted. Okay, so candles, incense, space heaters, ceiling fans, halogen lamps, and open flames are not permitted. Posters may be hung, but tape uh, marks left on the wall or ceiling may result in some charges. We may have to charge you for that. So uh, painted murals are not permitted. Uh, uh, residents are permitted to, li to uh, lie down on their own carpet and not uh, and cannot take carpet down to the floor. So um, you can there are some things you can get deliveries of food. You can get uh, postal deliveries, flower de deliveries, other deliveries are not permitted to be delivered directly to the residents' room but residents are required to pick up deliveries orders in person uh, at the information desk. So uh, read very carefully. Lost, many students, uh, Dr. Hargrove, I lost my card, a stolen ID cards. Uh, they can be replaced, and, uh, but you have to pay a nominal fee. 
Students are responsible for replacement of loss or stolen ID. Students will not be allowed to use their meal plan until they have been reissued a replacement ID. And I'm reading that to you because that's very important. That comes up as uh, to me quite a bit. Uh, no food or property, including glasses, cups, plates, silverware, may be taken out of the residential uh, dining halls. So uh, cell phones are encouraged to be uh, not be turned, must be turned off and placed on vibrate while waiting in the service line. No service will be given if you are talking on the phone or being disrespectful to personnel and our students. So you have to respect others. That's why we're teaching that this summer in my particular course, respect for others, respect for PSC property as well. So uh, those are what a lot more uh, the not permitted uh, like uh, appliances such as toasters, hot plates and boilers, sun lamps, microwave ovens there. Um, so read through this and uh, look at our fire safety drills and uh, look at our, our food and furnishing in your rooms and uh, just a lot of uh, great things. Mail, if you want to uh, get your mail, there's a, a area that you can pick your mail up uh, if your folks send you packages at the bookstore. Uh, you can pick those up. There are some quiet hours you have to observe and uh, quiet hours are from 11 p.m. to 10 a.m. daily. Noise heard outside the confines of the room is con uh, considered too loud regardless of the time of day. Uh, I would encourage you to pay attention to the rentals insurance. Residential life does not provide rentals insurance for the residents. However, you are encouraged to purchase student property rental insurance uh, from the National Student Services, Inc. And there's a website and a phone number. I would encourage you to get, um, and, it, and it's very inexpensive. Maybe last I saw was maybe 10, 15, 20, no more than $25. Uh, but it's important to have uh, rentals insurance if you're living in any facility uh, such as the residential life center. Uh, things may become missing out of your room. Uh, be careful when you, the stairwells, you, you want to make certain that they are clear of trash and debris. Don't prop the doors open. Let people use their keys or a card to get in. Again, no sitting in the stairwell.